Hi students, welcome back to Lycase Academy. Today we are discussing about last stage in prokaryotic replication, that is termination. Also, we are dealing with regulation of replication. In the previous video, we have already discussed about initiation and elongation of the prokaryotic replication. If you have not watched it yet, please check out our previous video and after continue watch this video. So let's get into the video. Replication termination of prokaryotic and of some eukaryotic chromosomes occurs at specific sequences called replication termini. It occurs when replication fox fuses. It is explained by collision release model and in the collision between replication fog occurs in a predetermined region called tercites. Tercites are located halfway from the sites. We can see in the image the tercites have polarity that is they arrest replication fog and these tercites are replicated in two clusters of five each with each cluster having a polarity opposite to that of the other. Tercites are located halfway from the origin. They are a geared sequence containing rank motifs. As I said earlier, there are 10 such motifs distributed as two clusters around terminator region. These clusters have opposite sequence polarity and they bind TAS protein, that is, the utilization substance. TAS protein have a permissive phase to replication fog that allow helicase to continue unwinding and also they have a non-permissive phase that hold the movement of helicase. Tercites located left of terminator region bind TAS proteins in a way that they allow counterclockwise replication fog to pass through by blocking the clockwise replication fog. Whereas TAS protein bound to the right will allow clockwise replication for moment blocking counterclockwise replication fog. As a result, replication fog generally fuse between TER C and TER A. So, tercites are not absolutely required for termination. Without tercites, replication is normal and cell survival, but termination region is random. So, result of termination is cadenites, that is, they are topologically linked doctor duplexes in the image. So, they can be resolved by topoisomerases. Topoisomerases produces topoisomers and DNA molecules that differ only in linking number are called topoisomers. So these topoisomerases cleave phosphorized bone and change their linking number. So the active site of this enzyme contain a critical thyrosine residue whose hydroxyl group OH function as a nucleophile attacking phosphorized bone in DNA. So it forms a covalent intermediate by an ester linkage between tyrosine and phosphate group. Through the gaps in the mix, the enzyme can decatenate or remove supercoils. Coming to types of topoisomerases, there are two types of topoisomerases, type 1 topoisomerases and type 2 topoisomerases. Type in type 1 topoisomerases, topoisomerase 1, topoisomerase 3, every odd numbers are coming under this category. And in type 2 topoisomerases, every even numbers, that is topoisomerase 2, 4, are coming under this category. So coming to type 1 topoisomerases, they contain a single tyrosine in the active site and they create single standard mix. So they can change the linking number by one unit. They have two subunits, main, mainly subtypes. They are type 1A and type 1B. 
The type 1A have their covalent intermediate is formed between tyrosine and 5' end of NIC DNA and their function is to relax negatively supercoiled DNA and they cannot relax positively supercoiled DNA. Also, they not and are not single stranded circular DNA and they relax supercoiling by strand passage mechanism in which one strand of DNA is passed through the gap in the next strand. So, their examples are topoisomerase 1, topoisomerase 3, etc. So, in subtype type 1b, there the covalent intermediate is formed between uh, tyrosine and 3' and of nick strand. The relaxed supercoiling by survival motion around the nick and the relaxed both positive and negative supercoiling. Their examples are topoisomerase 1b, topoisomerase 1, etc. Coming to Type 2 topoisomerase, they are homodimers. They contain two thyroxine residues that create double stranded mix on a duplex called gated segment or cheek segment, and they form a covalent intermediate between thyroxine and 5' end. Also, through the conformational change induced upon ATP binding and hydrolysis, another segment of the duplex called transfer segment that is T segment is passed through the gap created in the G segment. So they follow a strand passage mechanism. And their examples are topoisomerase 2, topoisomerase 4, DNA gyrase, etc. So the topoisomerase 4 involved in decatenation of daughter duplexes after replication, whereas DNA kyrase is a special kind of topoisomerase that can relax negative supercoiling as well as introduce them. So uh, in DNA kyrase, their relaxation is ATP independent, whereas their introduction of supercoiling is ATP dependent. That's all about termination. Now we are dealing with regulation of DNA replication. The DNA replication regulations can be explained by different methods such as origin sequestration, transcription layer or IC, DNA protein titration, regulatory inactivation of DNA protein, regulation of DNA reactivation sequence. In origin sequestration, we know that uh, around origin, there are some distributed repeats of palindromic sequences. We know that what is a palindromic sequence? That is in molecular biology, the palindromic sequences are the sequences in one strand is the same as the complementary sequence on the other strand uh, when read from the same direction on both strands, either 5' to 3'. So they will be same in both sides. So around the origin, there is distributed repeats of palindromic sequences such, such as G, A, A, T, T, C. Uh, so uh, the adenine residues, after immediately after initiation, the adenine residues in the palindromic sequences are mediated by damp transferase enzyme. Damp transferase, that is DNA adenine methyl transferase enzyme. And uh, the methyl group donor uh, is s adenosyl methionine in this reaction. So immediately after initiation, these uh, palindromic sequences are heavily methylated condition, whereas the nasal DNA is unmethylated condition. So this heavily methylated state is recognized by some kind of protein called as sec A, that is sequestration protein. So these proteins will bind these palindromic sequences and these sec A interact and bind periphery to the phospholipids in the membrane. So it physically sequesters the origin from initiator proteins. So this sec A hide the DNA gene and block transcription of DNA gene, thus production, product, thus block the production of DNA protein. Thus the initiation is inhibited. That is explained in origin sequestration. And the dissociation constant of sec A protein is high, and whenever they dissociate from these palindromic sequences, the origin become available for reinitiation. Prokaryotic replication can be regulated by transcription near or IC. Transcription in origins can regulate their accessibility to DNA protein. So after initiation, 
Myosin gene, which is located near to RIC, is activated and then transcribed towards RIC, creating positive supercoiling in the RIC. So, accessibility of RIC towards other proteins will be decreased. So, new initiations do not occur. So, after during the activation of replication, get A protein, which is transcribed away from the RIC and it creates negatively supercoiling in the RIC. That's it increases the accessibility of RIC, that it promotes initiation. So, the initiation after initiation, myosage gene activated and it uh, transcribed towards RIC, which creates positive supercoiling and it decreases the accessibility of RIC, that is, new initiation will not occur in that time. But when uh, if we want a new activation or application, then get a gene transcribed and it creates negative supercoiling near RIC and thus initiation, it, it occurs, it promotes initiation. The other method of regulation is by DNA protein titration. We know that DNA protein is the initiator protein. So there are high affinity DNA binding sites outside or IC that is called date locus. That is DNA titration, which gets replicated during initiation. So after initiation, these date locus will be replicated. And since the concentration of DNA protein remains the same, the increased date locus will recruit DNA protein uh, in the date locus, and there will be no longer enough DNA protein to bind to the RIC. That uh, uh, in, in that way, uh, the replication can be regulated. The next method uh, is by regulatory inactivation of DNA complex, that is RIDAC complex, which consists of beta clamp and HDA protein. This HDA protein is homologous to DNA protein, and uh, they stimulate ATPs activity of DNA ATP, converting to them inactive DNA ATP. Thus, uh, in the presence of DNA ATP, there will be no initiation. And these, uh, these uh, Regulatory inactivation can be reversed by regulation by DARS, that is uh, DNA reactivation sequence. This is a uh, DNA sequence and DARS are located away from the origin and they bind DNA ADP causing them to release ADP and uh, they bind to ADP, thus it activates DNA A. Thus uh, initiation uh, will occur. So that's all about regulation of DNA replication. We have discussed about prokaryotic replication in detail, including regulation of replication. We will be dealing with eukaryotic replication in the next video. Stay tuned for that. If you like this video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe our YouTube channel, Like His Academy, Your Educational Catalyst. Thank you.